message. Euh, là, ça c'est pour euh, le, le siège chauffant. Je vois, c'est un truc comme ça. Non, 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 non C'est le nitro Don't do that again, it's my nitro button. Hey guys, how's it going? It's London Fashion Week and Land Rover UK have very kindly lent me a Range Rover autobiography. For those of you who follow my channel, you know that I love my sports cars, in particular my small sports cars, my dream car after the fuel fraction trip was like the Porsche Cayman GT4. So SUVs, etc. have never really taken my fancy. They're not the sort of cars that I get behind the wheel of and get too excited about. But I do appreciate them all the same and I understand the practical reasons for them. I understand the benefits of these sorts of cars. But I know that this sort of car appeals to so many people and you know, especially ironically in towns and cities. Uh, I say ironically, I've been driving this car for 24 hours now and I do see the benefits of being so up high and above the rest of the traffic you do get a very good view of what's going on around you in terms of the cyclists around you the other cars the pedestrians etc so if you've got half a brain and you drive one of these cars then you should actually effectively be a better more alert driver um, or you should be able to sort of pick up things before they happen and see sort of you know cars braking or red traffic lights or hazards that are about to step out in front of you a lot better from this driving seat than you would do say from my one series or, or, or a lower car, a car that sits lower to the ground. Now this particular car is an autobiography Range Rover, it's the standard wheelbase but it's got pretty much all the toys, all the bells and whistles. Autobiography is, is like their top of the range uh, version of the Range Rover so yes it comes standard with many many options. It's the V8 diesel one so I think this particular car starts out life at about 95,000 basic and this one retails at about 110 grand so it's got a good 15 grand worth of options on top of the autobiography spec which as you can imagine is, is quite, quite quite outrageous. We've got the massive panoramic roof, we've got reclining rear seats, you know, four zone climate, we've got massage seats, we've got ventilated and heated seats, dual screen uh, infotainment system so the passenger can be watching TV while I'm watching the nav. We've got massive uh, screens in the back there with wireless uh, headphones. We've got the Meridian sound system, which is, I think it's, I think it's about 1400 watt sound system. I certainly turned it up about halfway yesterday and just couldn't believe the sound that it was producing. Talking of sound, it's extremely well insulated in here. Not that you can tell that right now because I am currently on the M25 heading towards Gatwick. The surface is terrible. I mean, it is awful. I've never been in a car that, that can sort of insulate this sound because it's just horrendous. It's got double glazing in the windows, all the seals and the doors and stuff are amazing. This has got soft closed doors as well. I mean it's got, it literally has got everything. It is uh, due to be getting a facelift very soon. This particular car is on a 15 plate so it's just over a year old. It's a, it's a press, uh, UK press car. There's a few things in here that I find have aged quite badly or things that to me anyway look quite old it's, and, and it's the nav system which I think is shared across the Jaguar uh, Land Rover range. It's the actual sat nav itself, the graphics on it are terrible but I think the new one that's going to replace it apparently is 10 times better and as I say I, I always use Waze anyway even if I've got the latest, very latest nav but comparing that nav say to something that's in the current S-Class or even more so the, the new 7 Series, it is night and day. But otherwise everything else is pretty good. There's, there's a lot of buttons in here, uh, there's lots going on. It's not the sort of car you jump in and you know exactly how to use sort of all the functions. But everything else is, is very clear, it's got a lovely digital dashboard which most luxury cars do have these days and that all works very well it's, um, you know it's pretty clear even in this sunlight now I can see everything my sunglasses on so that's good we've got a head-up display in this car as well head-up display is a bit Mickey Mouse compared to say the BMW one that I'm very used to even the older BMW one that's sort of in my previous 7 series is, is a lot better a lot sharper a lot clearer than, than, than what's in this where this car really sort of shines to me is I mean the ride in it is unbelievable you kind of expect that in a Range Rover, you know, you've got sort of what looks like about 
eight to ten inches of travel from the outside probably more realistically like five or six inches but where it comes into its own is where I'm going now in the corners now I've only really spent sort of a decent amount of time in the previous gen Range Rover so I'm talking we're going back to sort of 2008 2009 and that particular car was, I mean, that kind of put me off Range Rovers because it was just such a wallowy old boat. You know, you turn it into a corner and it just tipped like an old ship and all that weight up high as well. Of course, it's going to swing around and, and sort of, you know, uh, make you feel seasick and, and, and give you no in, uh, in, inspiration in terms of like handling and going into corners and stuff. It was terrible. That's what I think of when I think of a Range Rover handling. But of course, all the newer cars, the, 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 the most recent iteration of the Range Rovers and the, and the Range Rover Sports have got the the very latest sort of stabilization technology which that Rolls-Royce had that I was in the other week and the 7 Series has got and the S-Class has got they've all got it so when you turn into a corner instead of it sort of tipping over the dampeners or the, the, the spring rate or whatever I'm not actually sure how it all works but that they, the ones on the outside effectively stiffen up and and keep the car completely flat and level, which in a car like this makes a huge difference because you, you're anticipating it rolling when you when you turn into a corner, but yet it doesn't roll and immediately it turns what used to be a big old bus into something that's actually that's actually that actually handles and actually inspires your confidence sort of in the bends and stuff. It does a bit like with the with the rolls it it does kind of it, it makes it hard to judge where the limits are but then in this sort of car are you going to be taking it to the limits you know it, it's not the sort of car you take out a bit like my seven you you don't take these cars out to sort of try their limits and, and to push them to the edge in my seven series i i have a driving position very similar to i do in my say my m2 it's a very sporty driving position you sit nice and low steering wheel sort of comes towards you it's, it's a great place to be this one you're sitting a lot more upright uh, it's you're kind of you know I'm, I'm looking down the controls i'm looking down in the bonnet and out but i've got i've got plenty of headroom and i'm six foot three and a half i've got you know plenty of room in here but it's just a very different driving position yeah i still have good control over the car if i need it but it's uh yeah it's, it's a nice place to sit and it's a nice place to be and i'm sure the same is to be said for the sort of rear occupants and obviously the passenger the boot is massive and it's got the, the split tailgate on it so that the, the bottom sort of tailgate comes down if you need that uh or you leave that up and just lift the top part that's all remote on the key so it's it, it's very i can i can see as a as a family car i can see why it appeals to people if you've got the 80 or 90 100 grand i can see why one of these would appeal to, to to families because it makes life very easy and it's very spacious in here the leg room in the back on this standard wheelbase it's not massive but you could seat you know you could seat five adults in here no probs you could seat four big adults in here very comfortably i don't know too much about the economy on it as i say this is the v8 diesel so it's got plenty of poke not outrageously fast by any means very quiet subdued sort of engine you kind of hear the v8 occasionally i can imagine the v6 would be a bit underpowered when you think of all the weight that's in this i think these are like still close to two and a half tons i can't imagine the v8 petrol giving you any more performance than the diesel just due to the extra torque which which is the figure you need on a heavy car torque is what gets gets the thing up and going and that's why trucks and trains and all those things rely on loads of torque so although the petrol will sound better and it'll probably give you more top end performance for everyday use the diesel in my opinion is, is going to make more sense on top of that it's obviously the, the economy and i know someone spending 110 grand on a range rover is probably not going to be too fussed about the economy but at the same time you know you don't want to be you don't want to have to go into the petrol station and spend 10 minutes filling your car up every sort of couple of days do you so if you can if you can improve by, that by 30 or 40 percent then then why not Right, so my week with this Range Rover autobiography has come to an end. I really do see why people value these cars as chauffeur cars. I do understand why people like SUVs and, and you know, most in particular, say the Range Rovers now. They do give you a very good viewpoint 
on the road and in fact although they're so big on the outside they're almost easier to navigate than say my BMW 7 series long wheelbase and an S-Class because you can really sort of see where the corners of the car are you can judge yourself and as intimidating as they are you do tend to be able to sort of barge your way into traffic a bit easier and, and just navigate your way around London a lot easier than you would think in such a big vehicle. The, the seats are great, they're, they're not up to the BMW standards in, in terms of the actual uh, the contours and stuff on them and the support but they're very good. Uh, these particular ones are ventilated and heated and they've got a massage function in them as well. I really like the Alcantara headlining in this car. I'm not sure if it's standard or not on the autobiography, it's probably not. I love the panoramic roof. Uh, the, everyone I've had in the car has commented about that. You know, you open it up, it just really feeds light in here, a bit like panoramic roofs do in any car, but in this particular one, because it's already such a big, spacious cabin, uh, the, the, the light from the roof really does add to the, the sort of the feel. I really like that, again, the big glass windows, they just let so much light in. And although in terms of dimensions in here, it's no bigger than, say, a 7 Series or an S-Class, but it certainly feels a lot bigger because there's so much glass, so much light coming in, um, and there is more, there is more headroom, uh, and it just feels, it feels like you could swing a cat in here, and you probably could. Boot space is great. Uh, rear seats are really good. Everyone's been commenting on, you know, the comfort of those. Again, they're not quite up to S-Class standards, in my opinion, but they are lovely. They recline. Again, they're ventilated, heated in the back, and, and they've got lovely headrests in them. All they've, they've got really nice soft headrests with sort of adjustable um, head supports on the side there. Yeah, overall, I'm very impressed with the car. It, I do struggle to come to terms with the fact that this particular one is 110,000 um, pounds. I just... I don't know. I, I think I think they're just overpriced, in my opinion. You know, the the engine isn't particularly special. It uses a ZF eight-speed gearbox, which 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 works okay. It's not calibrated particularly well, in my opinion, uh, or you know, mated to the engine particularly well. But it does a, a decent job. The infotainment system uh, isn't particularly great. The sat nav is not brilliant and the buttons in here there's just buttons everywhere i mean some people might like buttons but it's like getting in a sort of 2003 saab you know where just buttons all over the place and uh and i'm guessing the facelifted car will, will be will be a lot simpler in that respect they're quite tacky you know like i don't know uh for that kind of money it's 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 not what you expect but on the flip side, you know, it's 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 a very well. You've got lots of leather, and it's it's all nice stitching everywhere. And as I say, it's comfortable. It feels luxurious in here, but it's when you start prodding away like like that is what is that? You know, that's just a nasty piece of plastic that's covered in hopefully in leather. But that for a hundred grand, you know. You, you wouldn't get that in, in an Audi RS6 or even an Audi A6. There's a few finishing touches that I think Jaguar Land Rover as a whole really need to get on top of. They do build very good cars on the whole and it doesn't matter what anyone says about them, they're always gonna sell, you know, they can't build enough of these things. The digital dash is pretty good as well. Um, I'm still a fan of the analog dash. Like I've got a digital in my seven and I know it's kind of going that way, but I much prefer analog dashes, but I understand in a car like this, the digital dash, and it works, you can see it in sunlight, it's, it's totally functional, so it's definitely not going back any steps, and you can pull up all sorts in there, you now have your endless amounts of stuff that I didn't have enough time to play with and have a look through, so that, that's all good. Um, the negatives, the negative points, aside from the some of the tacky finish bits, which I talked about, and let's face it, even sort of 300 grand Rolls Royces have got tacky bits within the cabin, which I've sort of touched on in some of my other videos. Same with the Bentleys, 7s, S-Classes, Maybachs. They've all got some cheap parts in the car from some from various parts bins of, of the actual sort of uh, parent group. So, you know, you're, you're always going to get a couple of odd bits. But a few things that, that, uh, that I didn't like about this car, for someone who's like six foot over, the actual boot lid comes up um, or the main tailgate bit comes up and it's got these horrible I mean the edges couldn't be sharper if they tried to make them sharper I mean they could have literally they could have put some Stanley blades on the side and it would have maybe enhanced the sharpness of what they've produced I can't believe that you know what we're three years down the line of this being in production and they've sold that many and and they've got those bits sticking out I mean 
I can't believe these cars are actually sold legally in the US for those bits because it's just, it's insane. It really is. And I, I, I was speaking to a colleague of mine who, who runs one of these, who has done for a couple of years, and he said he's got about 15 scars in the top of his head from where he's walked into it. And it's terrible. I mean, it's completely unacceptable. Uh, hopefully the facelift car has changed that because if they haven't, I just don't understand how that got through any kind of uh, approval because it is just deadly and it's exactly lined up with my eye. I mean, if I walked into it, I could pretty much take my eye out because let's face it, you open the boot, you walk towards the boot to load the boot and you've got these horrible sharp bits of plastic sticking out. And the other bad thing is <sighs> these, these dials. I mean, seriously, I could see why they've done it because they think that it looks cool and whatever else. Like it's in all the Jags and it's in all the, you know, it's a Jaguar Land Rover thing. You turn the engine off and it goes down, all very fancy, and you turn the engine on and it comes back up again. Fantastic, that's brilliant. Firstly, that's one more thing to go wrong. But secondly, what really sort of annoys me about this, I want to be able to just fire the car up and just go, you know, like sometimes the client gets in without you, you know, the client arrives all of a sudden, jumps in the car. If you need to move the car in a quick situation, you can't because you get in, Firstly, sometimes it doesn't start because it doesn't seem to read the key particularly well or you have to press it twice or three times. Client's coming, start the engine. Coming up, coming up, coming up, coming up. Now we can put it into drive. So I know it's only, a, what, five or six seconds, but it's it's five or six annoying and frustrating seconds. There's no mechanical problem with, with engaging drive quicker. It's just the fact that this, this uh, rotating knob or whatever you want to call it um, takes a while to come up that frustrates me and also <laughs> reversing and going forward you know doing a three-point turn or whatever it's just it's frustrating it's fiddly you kind of don't know where you are my old man's old Renault 16 had a column shift and in fact Mercedes have gone back to that now and it works really well because you know exactly where it is your hands are on the wheel so it's very easy when you're spinning the wheel and you just engage that it's very easy the traditional sort of gear uh, gear selector, the automatic gear selector, we all know that. It's tried, tested, works perfectly. This dial really doesn't. I mean, I, I've, I've, I've done a thousand miles in the car, mostly around town. I've used that many, 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 many times. I've got used to it, I know where it is, but it just, it's not intuitive and it doesn't do as good a job as a traditional system. But again, it's a bit like uh, the gesture control in the new 7 series. It's a gimmicky thing. It looks cool. If this car was 50 grand, I would have ignored all of those niggles, but, well, I wouldn't have ignored the boot niggle. I wouldn't have ignored that if it was a, if it was a, a, a Dacia Duster or whatever, because that is, is dangerous. Otherwise, yeah, it's, it's all very good. I believe these are just about to get sort of facelift and redone and I'm, I'm, I've heard all the sat nav and infotainment's gonna be completely stripped out and, and, and redone with a, with a much more up-to-date, uh, easy to use, much better graphic system. Um, yeah, it does confuse me that you can still, you know, use something like Waze or Google Maps on your phone and it just blows all of these systems away that, that are in 100 plus grand cars. It's, it's, it's quite embarrassing really for the, for the car manufacturers if you ask me, but I wish they'd just work with, and I know they are starting to sort of integrate phones into the car and stuff, but they just, they need to sort of pair up with someone like Google Maps or someone like Waze or whatever. and. It's just, it would just make life so much easier, wouldn't it? There are a lot of brilliant things about this car. I don't think I'll ever see myself in one. If I had 110 grand, I would throw it straight on an RS6 or something similar to that because that car does everything that this car does, bar obviously serious, serious off-roading. But how many people use these for, for that? Thank you very much Land Rover UK for, for lending it to us and uh, the, the models and everyone that's been in the car loves it. You know, you do, especially females, they, they love Land Rover products. They absolutely adore them. They like being up high and as I say, I completely understand why because uh, it does, it, it benefits the driver and it gives all the passengers a, a better view and surrounding and also you just feel a bit safer. And guys, thanks a lot for watching as always. Please subscribe if you haven't already and check out all of my other videos. Give me a thumbs up if you like this one. Lots of exciting things planned as always. Take it easy. I'm gonna go and get some sleep. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh. It's not fast enough. So turn it off. Oh. Put it down and then 